How you doing, guys? How's it going? <laughs> uh, welcome. Welcome to the show. It's Friday, TGIF, and all that good stuff. Welcome to Traveling with Bruce, the Friday edition. Having fun here today. What a beautiful, beautiful day here in Creston, British Columbia. I got to tell you, this is our fifth day in a row of pure sunshine. Uh, not a cloud up there. We got a massive high pressure system that's just locked in but we're about to lose it um next couple of days we're going back down we're at 70 degrees today uh right now and i think we're going higher we're going to hit about 77 in about two hours uh it's five o'clock eastern it's only two o'clock local time here and we will get another hour of heating maybe hour and a half more of the heat building up and uh yeah we're gonna hit about 75 77 very nice i actually have rosy cheeks today how about that i'm all embarrassed uh so fantastic uh yes the weather unfortunately will turn a little cooler we have a little bit of a front coming in but for us not too bad but in calgary uh they're going to be today 75 degrees and on sunday they're going to be 45 degrees yeah if, if that maybe 40 they're going whew, they're going down but uh, they'll come back uh it'll take about five or six days to slowly recover because we're into the time of year now where the sun is at such a high angle that even if we were to get any snow flurries, they don't know if they'll hit the ground here. And if they do, they'll fall as wet snow and we should be good. So spring is in the air. Summer is just around the corner. And that makes a man start thinking about winter cruises. <laughs> Cruising in the Caribbean. Uh, got that on my mind big time. Um, welcome to the show. Welcome to my channel. Those of you who are newbies, and uh, it seems like every day I, I hear from a new person, you know, which is fantastic. It shows that we're reaching more and more folks out there. If you're new to this channel, welcome to the show. I'm Bruce, uh, your host, jovial style host. Uh, uh, I love talking about cruise ships, cruise ship vacations, going on holidays, finding deals, new cruise ships that are coming out. The refurbishment of existing cruise ships, uh, anything to do with cruise ship vacationing. We love talking about it here on this show. I do this show eight times a week, over six days a week. Uh, how's that possible, you say? I mean, there's only six days. How can you do eight shows? Well, Tuesdays and Thursdays, I do two shows. I do a show at 5 p.m. Eastern and at 8 Eastern on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, like today, 5 p.m. Eastern. Tomorrow, Saturday, I'm on at 2 in the afternoon, 2 p.m. Eastern time. Those of you who work during the week, uh, you have an easy time getting a hold of me on, on Saturday, watching me live on Saturday at 2 p.m. But uh, otherwise, the show is just a regular broadcast. It's a regular video on my channel, and you can watch it anytime you want, uh, and people do. Uh, I find that about, uh, oh, I get about upwards of 200 views, uh, perhaps in the, in the first few hours of broadcast, uh, live and broadcast. And then 24 hours later, the, the show will reach three to four to 500 views, depending on how entertaining we are. <laughs> uh, I guess it's all in the titling and all in the subject matter. And, um, you know, some days are slower than others and some days are quicker than others. On Tuesdays and Thursdays and Saturdays, um, I find that if the cruise business, uh, if the cruise news is kind of light, then I'll have uh, for Tuesdays and Thursdays, the five o'clock show, I'll talk about uh, cruise matters. And of course, I'm always able to answer questions, any questions you have about cruising, of course. But uh, the after the evening show, the primetime shows and the Saturday shows generally start turning into trivia question shows. And uh, those are becoming becoming more and more fun. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, uh, I get a real kick out of uh, finding these questions for my viewers and putting them to the test. And oh, we have a riot with some of the answers, uh, silly to ridiculous. Uh, but we get some, uh, we get some pretty good ones going. And uh, I've been people requesting Elvis trivia. They want Elvis trivia. They want uh, Hollywood trivia. They love travel trivia, of course. And uh, they, they like me to mix it up. So. Uh, I'll see what I can do uh, tomorrow, two o'clock in the afternoon. We'll see what's going on in the cruise world. And uh, we have a little time. I'll throw some trivia in there. We'll have some fun with that too. Um, again, if you're new to the channel, uh, welcome. If you're new to uh, to cruising as a whole, uh, welcome. You're into, uh, you're into a whole new way of life. Uh, once you take your first cruise, 
chances are you're going to become an, a, addicted to, to cruising and you're going to want to go on another cruise and another cruise. Um, we talk about uh, this all the time on this channel, how uh, uh, my folks who are signing in right now, who are saying hi to me, are addicted to cruising. I can't get enough of it. Um, today's question that I had for, for everybody on the title of this show is, uh, which cruise ship would you like to get on and uh, what uh, port would you like to visit this, uh, this say, this next year or so? Uh, got anything in mind? Something you've been to before, you'd like to go back again, or a cruise port uh, you've never been to before? Um, you know, maybe, uh, maybe you don't have a favorite ship that you'd like to sail on. You just want to get to a certain place by the sea, wh whether it's Santorini in Greece or uh, maybe it's... Um, uh, you know, seeing Rome, so so going into the port city that'll take you to Rome, or the port city that'll take you to uh, Florence and Pisa, or you want to go to Monaco. Uh, like myself, a bucket list for me is uh, going to uh, Monte Carlo. I want to see the uh, F1 race, and I would love to be on a cruise ship that's just uh, sitting right offshore there. When those cars are whipping around that circuit, uh, I would love to know that, yeah, I'm watching the race here today, and then uh, tonight, then. Uh, I'm on that little baby over there. And uh, we're spending a night or two here in Monte Carlo, and then we're heading over to uh, Barcelona or, or other ports. That would be uh, just a lovely thing. I see those, uh, I see the race, and then I'll see these ships sitting out there, and I, I'm just drooling. I go, oh, man, I wish I was on one of those. The yachts are one thing, but the big cruise ships, th that's cool for me. I would love to be on a cruise ship knowing that uh, I'm in Monaco, baby. That would be great. The bucket list. But what is it for you? Is it Tokyo? Is it um, is it Sydney, Australia? Do you want to uh, do you want to be near the the Opera House and uh, have a photo up there on a cruise ship? Uh, Melbourne, perhaps, or how about Hong Kong? How about Hong Kong Harbor? Is that on your bucket list of a place you would love to go to? I, I, there's just so many that I can think of. Uh, Rio de Janeiro, perhaps uh, Sao Paulo, Brazil, maybe. Uh, my goodness, uh, there's no end, is there? Just no end to it. The Panama Canal, going through the Panama Canal. That would be another neat little thing. Anyway, uh, I throw that question out to you guys and see what you think. I have a few topics I'm going to uh, go over today, a couple little things. Uh, the channel itself, uh, this channel is uh, coming along. It's growing. Um, not too quickly the last couple of days. We've only added about 10, 12 subscribers this week, but I think we've lost about 10 subscribers I have a feeling, and I'm convinced, uh, YouTube is cleaning house. Um, there have been funny things, funny things going on, quirky, quirky things going on on my YouTube channel. And I think YouTube as a whole, um, uh, videos of mine are, are acting funny. Um, my subscription counts are, are, are wacky. Uh, for the first time in four months, I had a negative day on subscriptions where I lost more subscribers than I gained. That, that hasn't happened since the before Christmas. Uh, I have a feeling that a bunch of channels are being eliminated, uh, erased from existence, and all subscriptions that, that were with these channels also have been erased. And I have a feeling that a number of these channels that were playing these sub-for-sub -sub games, uh, I'll subscribe to your channel. If you subscribe to my channel games, they've been kicked off. And uh, I think a lot of those, not a lot of those, but there were probably several dozen of those who tried to who subscribed to my channel and then would send me a message saying, I subscribe to you. Why don't you subscribe to me? And I, I just don't do that because I only subscribe to channels I like to watch. And so uh, I didn't want to play that artificial little game. I have a feeling that some of these abusers of that program, like to the tune of 500 times, 1,000 times, they've been asked to leave without even being asked. <laughs> God. God. And so all the channels they subscribe to, that re those reverse out. And so this week, I think there was some cleansing going on. Um, I'm noticing some other issues with my analytics that aren't right. And I'm uh, puzzled by some of the nonsense going on. Uh, so I, I don't know what this is. I, I'm, just, I'm just sitting here going, please tell me, just, just give me a sign that this is really good news, that you're now doing this because you're now ready to monetize the keepers, the channels that you uh, want to keep on YouTube. Uh, you know, the guys that do, say, eight live streams a week and talk about cruise ships all the time, uh, re-monetize those channels and, uh, you know, let the guy make a few bucks. <laughs> I'm hoping that's what's happening. I don't know. Uh, it's the silent treatment. Uh, they, don't, they don't really, they're not proactive in talking to us. They kind of leave us alone. But, you know, a lot of us creators, 
that, that's not the right grammar, is it? But a lot of a lot of creators like myself and others, we're we're sort of individuals, and uh, we're one man groups, one one woman, you know, acts. We like the independence, but um, I love the fact that YouTube kind of lets me do whatever I want to do, you know, within reason, of course. Uh, but uh, I, I find it frustrating that I, I just don't feel that they're uh, proactively telling me what's happening. But that's just me being alone in the house uh, on a channel in in front of my peeps, um, just letting you know what I'm what I'm thinking, what I'm feeling. But uh, love doing these shows, love doing these programs, love putting up videos. Uh, constantly working on my channel, constantly trying to find ways to promote it on the internet. I want to thank some of you out there. I know there are some of you who are really helping me. Uh, you are retweeting my tweets. You are sharing my videos. Uh, you are commenting on my videos. You are commenting on social media about my videos, which uh, just all, it just adds up. It just helps. It helps. It helps. Facebook sharing of my videos is a big deal. If, uh, if any of you share any of my videos, on your Facebook pages to all your friends out there and you can get some of them to share it on top of that. Oh, that is massive for me. Uh, that is free promotion, free advertising. Uh, for every, you know, 100,000 pairs of eyes that see what I'm doing, um, there will be a percentage of them who will go, I'm gonna watch this guy. I'm gonna see if he's any good. I'm gonna see what these live shows are all about or I've been thinking about going on a cruise and I'm wondering, oh, he's kind of funny. Oh, oh they, they, these people have a good time with this guy and oh, the trivia is kind of neat. and. Uh, I just get I just get a lot of positive feedback from people who kind of stumble on me. I get I get comments all the time with, from people who say, "I just found you. I, I just I just found your channel. I don't know how it happened. I just found you. You're you got a really great channel, <laughs> great videos." And I say thank you. I work hard at it. I think, and um, my my viewers have a lot to do with it because they kind of cheer me on and. Uh, they participate in what I do, and it just makes all the difference. And uh, people want to become part of a, you know, a good place. And uh, if you've got troubles at work, or you hate that television set with all that garbage on there, shut the darn thing off and hang out here for with us for a little while, and uh, you won't be subjected to that kind of crap. <laughs> I hope that helps. Okay, uh, subscriber count uh, eighteen hundred forty-two right now is our number. Um, Probably hit 1850 the next day or so. Looking for 1900, and then right after that, 2,000 subscribers. Uh, that'll be great. Um, today's April 27, 2018. Um, January uh, 17th, we're at 225 subscribers. Um, February 19th, we hit 1,000. Here we are at 1842. So we're we're on our way up. And thanks to all of you. Yes, I am. It's true. I am not monetized still by YouTube. And so I am surviving by the skin of my teeth with uh, any way I can find to bring in income. Uh, income has been coming in from the generosity of viewers through Super Chats, and I thank you. Income has come in through donations on my PayPal link, which is up there, uh, which is even better than Super Chat because I get more of the money. Uh, but I thank any donation I can get. And then there's the store, uh, the Red Bubble store. For traveling with Bruce, um, it has followers, it has likes, it gets comments, and it has orders. <laughs> I love it. Uh, I uh, I know that um, that the only orders I receive uh, so far on the uh, on the from the store are from you viewers uh, because uh, I'm a complete unknown to the outside world. Really, uh, you know, how would someone in Peoria know who I am? Uh, how would, how would anyone in Hamburg know who I am? But if you watch the show, you know we talk about it. I did a video about the items, and now um, I've got that site, and I've got keywords out there that are starting to filter out into the analytics. But uh, uh, the orders so far have come strictly from the viewers, uh, and I've been getting positive reports, good feedback, fantastic feedback from, from, from some of you on the product, how it looks, how it fits, how it feels, and all of that. And I really appreciate it. Uh, please let me know the experience. How is it for you? Are you happy with the quality? Are you happy with the uh, the time it took to arrive? Are you, uh, uh, if you have any issues with the merchandise, please let me know. I'm di dying to know how they treat you. Uh, so far, everything sounds great. And I'm just so grateful for that. I 
did my research on these folks um, before I picked them to be my uh, uh, producer and, and shipper of merchandise. And I, I found very good, very good information about them. Um, and so far, everything is holding up uh, as it was to be expected. So I'm very grateful for that. And every order uh, that goes through there, a, a percentage of the sale comes to me. And, uh, and yet, I don't have to collect the money. I don't have to make the item. I don't have to pack it. I don't have to label it. And I don't have to buy the postage or, or whatever the shipping method is. And I don't have to worry about following it till you get it. And I don't have to warranty it. They do all of that for me. And it's just a, you know, a whole lot off of this bald head here to not worry about. So I can keep concentrating on what I love to do, which is talking to you people about going on a cruise. And, uh, you know, let's see what's up going up, going on out there uh, with the cruise world. So that's, Fantastic. Thank you, Redbubble, for everything so far. Thank you, subscribers and viewers, for ordering product. And I hope you'll order more. And uh, we'll keep trying to come up with new logos and uh, keep the variety coming out and out and out. And uh, Mother's Day is coming. Father's Day is coming. So if you know someone on either side who might want something uh, in this area, maybe a coffee mug, a travel mug, a, a top, a, a sticker, a cell phone holder, Check it out, and uh, thank you for your support because it all comes together. Little pieces all come together. Now, if YouTube would just monetize me, that would help as well, but I have to wait until they're ready. What can I say? Let's see who's here. If you're just joining me, uh, sign in and tell me where are you watching me from. What's your high temperature going to be today? you have any questions about cruising, let me know. Tell me uh, what cruise ship do you want to go on in the next year, and where do you want to go on, a, on the cruise ship? If it's just a ship you want to talk about or if it's a port you want to talk about, I don't care. Talk to me. I love it. Let's share some thoughts here. Jim Thomas was first on the show here. He was talking to me at uh, 427. He uh, he sent a text saying it's 70-ish in Anderson, California. Hello, everyone. Hey, Bruce. Ready for another great show with you today. Uh, how is your knee, Jim? I know you had your operation yesterday. I uh, hope you're getting better. I hope that uh, the side effects are too are too much. I hope the meds are working for you. <laughs> and uh, welcome to the show. Cheers, everybody. One of my favorites is here. This is a brand new subscriber. Um, she's been a subscriber with, for me now with a for me with about what it was three weeks uh, maybe or so three three and a half weeks. Auntie Jane Eleven from New Zealand is here. How are you? Morning, Bruce. Morning, Jim, and everyone. Weather here is. Yucky! I got. I think I gotta incorporate that on a T-shirt somehow. You know, avoid the yucky weather. Go cruising or something. I'll figure something out. Uh, the weather is yucky. Um, uh, heavy rain, wind, cold. Uh, that's not. That's not good. Stay inside and uh, get get a hot chocolate going or uh, some some wine and warm it up. You know, a little bit of cinnamon cinnamon in there and. It'll be all right. Hi, Auntie Jane. Welcome back. Peter Heckema is here. Here's another buddy of ours. Uh, hi, Bruce. Uh, another gorgeous day here in Tarpon Spring. Just sitting around the pool waiting for your show to start. Great trivia questions last night. By the way, 83 degrees. Uh, we're going to be 75. They're at 83. Nice weather. Debbie Manuel. Hi, Jim. Hi, Auntie Jane. Cloudy, almost 70 here in Northern California. Hi, Peter. Hi, Debbie Manuel. Welcome back. Got your email. So glad you're here. Uh, fantastic. Jim Thomas. Uh, hi, Auntie Jane. Sorry for that yucky weather. Hi, Deb. <laughs> Jim knows Deb. <laughs> Deb knows Jim. <laughs> James Lennon is here. Hey, Brucey, baby. It'll be 10 p.m. here in Galloway. So I'm off the bed because I'm working at 4 a.m. Oh, I'm looking forward to catching up with your broadcaster tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. when I get home. <laughs> Thanks, James. Have a good rest and uh, have a great show tomorrow. Have a good day tomorrow and watch the show. Thanks for coming by. Auntie Jane, hi, Debbie. Thanks for that. Jim, it can only get better. Jim Thomas, oh, the weather will change soon enough. Let's hope so. Let's hope it changes for everybody. Silo is here. Uh, ah, Friday, the clouds are rolling in. Looks like rain at some point. 62 and 50 for the high and low in Seattle. And, yes, 183 days until the bliss and the haven serenity now serenity now yes from seinfeld um yeah you're getting that uh that unsettled weather that we're supposed to start getting later like tonight or tomorrow so yeah this little 
brief, this wonderful, glorious sunshine is going to kind of leave us for a while and hopefully we'll get it back in soon in, in short order. Another day closer to uh, another day closer, Debbie. He's saying bliss. Woohoo. Because <laughs> Debbie is also waiting. Her days are coming as well for the bliss. Hi, Salo. I know getting more and more excited every day. Peter Heckema. Hi, Debbie. Hi, everyone. Tracy Dunlap is here. Hi, uh, all hot in the high 80s in Naples, uh, Florida today. Uh, though just had a rain shower. It's now gone. It's over now. Sorry, can't stay for the entire show. Nephew's last baseball game for the playoffs. Boy, it's getting, getting close. Getting close. Fantastic. Uh, Richard C. Rain in 59 degrees in Pennsylvania. Welcome, Richard. Silo, uh, there he is. The man, the myth, the legend. <laughs> the YouTuber. I'm here. Hello. <laughs> I'm doing what I can with what little I got. Uh, Paul Wilgus. Hi, Bruce and all. 63 and finally sunny after five days of rain and clouds here in Virginia. Welcome back, uh, Paul. Uh, 63. Yeah, well, you know, sunny. We'll take that. Hopefully it'll warm up for you now. Paul, uh, Paula Jordan is here. Hi there, Paul. Uh, Pamela Jordan. Hi, Pamela. Uh, hi, Bruce and everyone. Mostly sunny. And 75 Fahrenheit here in Iva, South Carolina. Uh, nice steady weather there. Welcome back, Pamela. Charles Jordan is also here. Hello, everybody. Jo Charles, how are you, pal? Wendy Thompson is also here. Hi, everyone. Hi, Bruce. 75 here in Bland, Missouri, waiting on my traveling with Bruce travel mugs. Oh, yes. Okay. Fantastic. Send me a photo when you get them. Let me know how you like them. That is awesome. Leslie Lovelace. Hi, Bruce and gang. Leslie here. 52 degrees and raining in Allentown, PA. Uh, fantastic. Sorry it's raining, but welcome back, Leslie. Um, just hang in there and wait for that stuff to go away. Just get lost. Uh, get some nice warm weather. Seakeeper is here. Uh, hi, Bruce and all. 78 Fahrenheit. Raining heavily. Thunder and lightning in Takista. Thumbs up. It's always nice to be here with you live. Thank you, sir. Always nice to have you as well. Uh, thank you for always encouraging those to give us thumbs ups. Love that when you folks give me thumbs ups. Thank you very much. We already got 18 going. This is fantastic. Throw me thumbs ups and the analytics will, uh, will kick in a little more on the old computer at YouTube. Thank you, everybody. Wendy Thompson. Hi, Jim. Deb. Seakeeper. Leslie. She's saying hi to the whole world here. Peter Heckema. Looking forward to our symphony of the seas cruise oh it's coming wendy thompson let's go to belfast there's there's a thought let's go to belfast debbie emmanuel is saying hi wendy iskew park hi bruce it's iskew in thunder bay ontario it's plus eight celsius it's about 47 degrees i guess sunny and snow is almost gone almost gone laugh out loud let's hope so let's burn that away and let the grass start to grow and get the leaves out Peter Heckema, November is when he's going on the cruise in uh, on the Symphony of the Seas. That is coming, Peter. Fantastic. Silo, uh, for the question of the day, looking forward to Mazatlan while on the bliss. Why? Because it'll be Halloween. Yeah! <laughs> Halloween in Mazatlan, Mexico. Uh, they love Halloween, too. So that should be fun. That'll be great. The whole ship, I'm sure, will be uh, decked out. Uh, that'll be a blast. That's just going to be great. Leslie uh, loves these. Bruce, I thought of a great trivia subject. How many celebrities, real and fictional, called Bruce? Can you name? Well, there you go. There's a, there's a ton, I would imagine. A uh, ton of Bruce's out there. Silo, Steve, laughing out loud, Leslie. Iskew Park, my dream trip would be having a port of call in Sydney, Australia on the Bliss. That would be kind of cool, wouldn't it? Uh, I, I've heard, uh, I heard something the other day. Was it maybe last week I read something about Sydney, Australia's talking about... Um, Oh, they were talking about uh, uh, the size of certain ships that that can't can't come into the harbor or can't actually uh, dock in the harbor because how big they are. Uh, if you brought in an Oasis class cruise liner, um, there would have been issues in Sydney, and they're talking about how to address it and uh, what are we going to do about it? Are we going to expand the, the, our docking facilities? And you know, because Sydney is a very popular uh, 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 docking uh, visit, you know, harbor for for visits. Will be interesting to see how that goes. Uh, Charles Jordan, Roatan, Saint Lucia, and Saint Kitts are three I would like to see. Uh, fantastic there, Roatan. I, I hear you know mixed reviews. Uh, some people like it, some people don't particularly like it. Some people say they loved it ten years ago. They don't like it now, but uh, to each his own. A sea keeper, a wish list ship, Symphony of the Seas. <coughs> favorite favorite port of call, Harvest K, Dream Destination, Oh Morea, French Polynesia, uh, Life Goal, 
uh, become rich and uh, do it all and more. <laughs> I, I, those are I'm checking the list off of that right there. <laughs> all, all those meet my criteria uh, to a T. Very well said. Uh, Car uh, Corey Lois uh, a Hi, Bruce. Nice to see you again. Uh, CA, how you doing? <laughs> Welcome back. Great to have you. Uh, Kathy Butler, hi, everyone. Happy Friday. Welcome back, Kathy, one of my favorites. Good to have you here. Wendy Thompson, uh, Sea Keeper, the Southern Cross. Would love to see it in the sky. Oh, yeah. Peter Heckham, I just thought I would tell you that the uh, uh, Traveling with Bruce shirts are making uh, make uh, are make a little small, so it's better to order one size larger. If you're ordering these uh, fitted shirts, the fitted ones, uh, they may be a little tighter, uh, so you may want to go one size larger. Uh, if you have an issue with sizing, get a hold of those folks. They'll take care of you, uh, just to let you know. Leslie Lovely, Peter, the 100% cottons are the fitted ones, and I'm thinking it's fitted, but he'll let us know. Nancy Nolan, hi, Bruce, and everyone. Started out great this morning, but yuckies rolled in. Range has stopped through. Uh, and 50 here in reading, uh, in reading, uh, no, sorry, Reading, Ma Massachusetts. Reading, that's how we pronounce it, Reading, Massachusetts. Uh, Jim Thomas, oh, knee is is there. Oh, knee is there. It can only get better from here on out. <laughs> Jim had his operation on his knee yesterday, and hopefully the next few days it'll make a, it'll make a good comeback here. Uh, just take it easy, Jim, and do what you're told. Take your meds when you're supposed to. Leslie Lovelace, Jim, that's the spirit. Jim Thomas is smiling. Leslie Lovelace, a wish list ship, uh, the cruise ship, uh, favorite port and a favorite destination. Both are anywhere but here. Just, just anywhere but here. A any cruise, any ship, anywhere. Just get me out of here. I, I want to get out. Uh, Silo, I would like to sail the uh, Norwegian Joy, uh, the original Bliss, to any of the Asian ports. Right on. There you go. And Leslie Lovelace, I'm with you, Asilo. China and Japan are top of my list. Uh, yeah, the Orient would be something pretty cool. I think for me, uh, Shanghai would be something I'd like to see, an area I'd love to see. And, of course, uh, Hong Kong, uh, that's on a bucket list of mine. Uh, Singapore I'd like to visit. Uh, I've always wanted to visit Singapore. Um, the Dubai thing, you know, the Dubai thing. Um I would love to fly to Dubai on Emirates Airlines. Uh, boy, if I could go business class or higher, wouldn't that be great? But uh, uh, even so, uh, uh, economy class on Emirates uh, beats any economy class on an American airline or a Canadian airline, hands down. But I would love to fly to Dubai, um, and I'd like to hang out there for like five or six, seven days. Uh, I might stay a couple of nights on the uh, QE2. That'd be kind of fun now that it's open. Uh, I'd kind of like to check it out. But um, I'd like to see the area of Dubai, and then I wouldn't mind catching a cruise that departs from Dubai. Uh, that might be a thought, because I, I sense uh, going forward over the next few years that Dubai will become a, um, a more and more popular hub for a cruise ships to call home, to make it a home port, uh, because Dubai is going after the cruise business. They want it. They want a piece of that action. The trick of it is, though, that um, you can offer seven-day cruises in and around the uh, the uh, the Gulf, but um, you know you can't take a cruise over to Yemen for a quick hi, how are you? You can't really do a cruise over to Iran and pop in to see those people. Um, and then there's the uh, you know the Pakistan issue. Uh, you you literally have to uh, you know cruise uh, for about two or three days out of Dubai to get to a port other than Oman or Muscat or Qatar or Bahrain in that Gulf region. Uh, so I can see where, uh, you know, you get on a ship in Dubai and you'll have two sea days right off the get-go. You'll move like 1,000 to 1,400 miles towards India. Uh, but even then, uh, once you've done that for a couple of days, maybe Sri Lanka, India, if you can do that, your next uh, logistical port of call might have to be all the way over in Thailand and then perhaps Malaysia, uh, catch up with Singapore if you can get that far, and then perhaps start working your way back. And you know, a cruise ship can't go three thousand miles in one day. It can do uh, twenty-five knots, thirty knots, well, twenty-five knots, so you know, twenty twenty-five knots, so twenty-five miles an hour. Let's say twenty-five miles an hour for twenty-four hours in a shot, six hundred, seven hundred miles. You do two or three sea days, two or three sea days, and you've moved a couple thousand miles. For Dubai to go the other direction, you know, from Dubai to go the other direction, you're you're possibly going to Jeddah, 
uh, in Saudi Arabia, maybe a to Petra, is it Petra in Jordan? Um, uh, then through the Suez Canal into the Mediterranean, but that would be really one-way cruising. You might have a cruise that departs Dubai and ends up in Rome or Barcelona, and then the ship will start from Barcelona and work its way back uh, to Dubai with several stops in the Mediterranean first. Uh, I could see that being a regular scheduled run, but Dubai to say Africa, um, you know, you've got Somalia, you've got um, Sudan, you've got uh, too many pirate spots. You just can't, uh, you can't, you know, use that area. So uh, Dubai has its limitations, I suppose, uh, for, you know, what it can offer uh, for, uh, for cruises in the area. But they do, uh, they are trying to get cruise ships to use Dubai as a home port. And I think they're offering incentives. They're probably going to be building out some very luxurious port facilities uh, so that the terminals will be very nice uh, air conditioned with, you know, air conditioned gangways and all this sort of stuff because the heat, my God, the heat. Uh, so <laughs> we'll have to see how that all, uh, all that works out. Um, let's see here. What do we got for comments? Just so I, I'm making sure I'm still catching up with everybody here. Uh, like say Leslie saying, I'm with you silo, China and Japan are top of my list. Wendy, the bean in a fitted shirt. Oh no, the bean in a fitted shirt. Jim Thomas is laughing out loud. Andy Jane, uh, any ship, any port. <laughs> right on, Andy Jane. Jim Thomas, uh, while eating a biscuit. <laughs> uh, Debbie likes that. Uh, Jay, uh, Peter Heckema, it's Leslie, I ordered the 100% cotton uh, for my wife, which is a little tight, but shows off her figure very nicely. Uh, she loves the material it's made of. Well, okay, there we go. Wendy Thompson, love laughing out loud. JT, uh, Leslie Lovelies, I've been invited to Israel a few times. I refuse to go, and I'm Jewish. I'm not. <laughs> uh, Paul Wilgus, uh, Leslie, I would love to go to Israel. And uh, Silo, Steve says, uh, stay on the Queen Mary, fly out of LA to Dubai, then stay on the QE2. After that, get on your cruise to a port for an Atlantic crossing that changes to uh, uh, Panama Canal. Whew, man, you're seeing the whole globe right there. That's something. Wouldn't that be something? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, fly to, uh, fly to, uh, yeah, do LA, do the Queen Mary, fly to Dubai, do the QE2 for a couple of nights, get on a cruise ship, go all the way over to, say, Singapore, get off of there, fly over to Australia, get on a ship in Sydney after a couple of weeks in Australia, get on a ship in Sydney. Do the uh, do that region, uh, New Zealand, and so on. Uh, then fly back to say Hong Kong. Then get on a ship from Hong Kong all the way to Seattle, or if you can, if it's possible to Los Angeles. You've just gone around the world. How about that? You've just gone around the world. Unbelievable! What a trip. Uh, Tracy saying that's on my bucket list. Bruce Dubai on Emirates Air. A week or so there, then a cruise. Yeah, that'd be great. Wes Morrison. Would love to do a cruise to the British Isles on Viking. Yes, yes. All-inclusive Viking cruise. Six-star. Oh, man, that would be nice. Uh, Debbie Manuel Salo, I want you as my travel agent. <laughs> Leslie Lovelies, Paul, send me a postcard when you do. Laugh out loud. Yes, yes. I know I fantasized about flying on Emirates. Um, and I've looked up Emirates uh, airfares uh, for like a multi-city flight. So flying out of anywhere in the United States, uh, whichever air airline, whichever airport they serve, you can use like, like starting in Seattle or down to Frisco. They fly out of uh, uh, Los Angeles now. They're flying out of uh, uh, Dallas. Um, let me think a minute. They're flying out of um, Miami, I think. On a, yeah, Miami. New York, of course. Chicago. Um, I'm not sure. Are they flying out of Washington? They might be. Anyway, they're flying over all the way over to Dubai nonstop. These are all nonstop flights out of the continental, like USA, out of, out of Canada, only Toronto at this point. Uh, it's frustrating as hell. It only Canada government only allows them in and out of Toronto. Um, but um, they fly nonstop to Dubai. Now, once you're in Dubai, that's their hub. And now you just tell me where you want to go because they can take you anywhere. And uh, if you want to do a river cruise out of Vienna, you can take a flight from Dubai after spending you know, several days in Dubai, maybe a week, fly to Vienna, on Emirates again, and take a cruise there. Uh, get on a Viking cruise liner in uh, Amsterdam, take the Viking cruise to the British Isles with my friend here, uh, Wes, and uh, back to Amsterdam. 
Uh, then you can uh, take a, a you know a Euro Rail uh, tour of Europe for a little while, and anywhere in Europe you end up, to tell me the major city: Frankfurt, uh, Hamburg, Paris, uh, Zurich, Vienna, Madrid, Barcelona. You can fly back to Dubai nonstop on Emirates again on that same air ticket. You're back to Dubai. Uh, and let's say they do or do not have a cruise out of Dubai. Let's say they do, it takes you to uh, Singapore, or they don't, you stay there for a couple of days, and you grab another flight from Dubai, and this time you fly, say, to Sydney. Now you're doing Australia, and uh, same air ticket, by the way. Now you're in Sydney for a while, take a cruise from Sydney around back to Sydney, fly back to uh, Dubai, and then uh, a couple of days there, and then back to the USA. That whole ticket, that whole Dubai, uh, that Emirates air ticket, uh, even with Sydney, Australia thrown in there, uh, you can do a six flight deal for like 30 odd thousand bucks US, depending on the time of year you do it. It's just incredibly cheap. It's just, it's just amazing. And you add up the number of hours you're in the air and the number of miles you're flying, it comes out to about 10 cents a mile. It really, it really does. It's stunning. Uh, you're flying 30,000 miles for 3,000 bucks. <laughs> That's <laughs> just incredible. And you're flying, generally speaking, on A380 aircraft, the double-decker planes. So it's really roomy in there. You don't feel like you're in a cramped 737 or an MD-80 or anything like that. You're getting real meals, with, you know, with real dishes. Uh, pretty nice. Uh, if you can afford, to, of course, you can afford uh, business class. Well, yeah, you're going to spend quite a bit more. But you get more. Uh, so there you have it. Um Throw those cruises in there and uh, some uh, some uh, Airbnb or some uh, bed and breakfast accommodation in Europe. Or if you have some friends, make it work. A uh, little cruising, a little flying, a little training. Uh, oh, my gosh. What a wonderful, wonderful way to go. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Paul sent me postcard. Leslie, and how much would that cost, Silo? The Silo, well, considering my wife is spoiled and only wants to stay in the haven, I would guess way too, too dang much. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy, uh, who spoiled her? Wendy saying, who spoiled her? Leslie Love is right, Wendy. Uh, Jim Thomas costs a Jeep, but empty every pocket. Costs a Jeep, uh, just empty every pocket. Right on. Silo, she spoils herself. I just watch. <laughs> Don't get in the way of this. Just just, just sit back and, and watch and see what happens. Oh, my. Yes, these, uh, these, uh, these trips could be something if you get to go to where you want to go and how you want to do it. Oof, man, could you do something? A uh, couple of topics of, uh, of info for you. Um, I read this a couple of days ago, and I, uh, I smiled when I read this story. And uh, so, some of you probably caught this story. Maybe you have, maybe you have not. But it's the story of uh, a woman by the name of Mama Lee Wachtstetter. I love how uh, that's a German uh, pronunciation, uh, W-A-C-H-T, Stetter, Wachtstetter. Um, Madame Wachtstetter lives full-time on the Crystal Serenity cruise ship, has lived full-time on the Crystal Serenity for nine years straight, nine years in a row she's been on that ship. Prior to being on the Crystal Serenity, she was on a Holland America ship for three years, also full-time. That's a total of 12 years she's been on a cruise ship, living on her own. Her husband passed away, uh, 50 years of marriage. He passed away after they had done over 80 cruises together, 80. And uh, one of his last uh, wishes for her, uh, apart from living a long and happy life, was uh, keep on cruising. Any way you can figure it out, just keep on cruising. You love it. You know how much you love going on a cruise ship. Keep on cruising. And after he passed away, she apparently lived in a, um, I think, a senior-type center for about a year or two. Um, and she realized that uh, this just isn't going to cut it. Uh, being a, a widow in a senior center just wasn't working out. And she um, decided to follow her husband's uh wishes to a higher level and um, sold everything, sold off everything, the car, the furniture, you name it, got rid of it all, uh, became liquid. They had done rather well for themselves. He was a financial uh, advisor, had done rather well in the finance market. <clears throat> and she is paying about $100,000 a year to be on right now a six-star cruise ship full-time. 
And uh, for 2000 bucks a week, to be on a six-star cruise line, uh, that is a, a pretty good price uh, for what you're getting. Now, if she were full-time on Carnival, <laughs> that would be less, but she'd be getting less. And uh, here, uh, she estimates that she's now been on uh, uh, over 400 cruises uh, on her own. Um, she has done 15 world cruises around the world, 15 times. Um, the, sh the ship can hold a thousand passengers. It's a six star liner. It's all inclusive. And she is pampered by the staff uh, because, you know, they, they all know who she is. <laughs> she's the, she's, she's on the ship longer than a lot of the staff have been on the ship because there's turnover with staff from time to time. They've only made a few modifications to her cabin. Um, she's, I believe, in a in an ocean view suite. I don't think she has a balcony, but she's in an ocean view suite. And um, they've, uh, they've added a few uh, shelves for her to handle some of her uh, uh, personal items. Uh, she has some kind of a jewelry rack for her costume jewelry. Uh, and... Um, her routine is pretty uh, pretty regular, actually. Um, she rarely leaves the ship. Uh, she has no need to go on shore anymore. She's been offshore or onshore everywhere in the world. Uh, so you know, the ship pulls into uh, <laughs> pulls into Barcelona. She's done Barcelona. <laughs> pulls into uh, Nice, France. She's seen Nice, France more than once. So she loves to stay on the ship. Uh, she loves to crochet and knit. Uh, she uh, has her favorite usual table in the dining room every day. Um, the staff know exactly the uh, portions she likes to have for her meals, usually a half portion. Uh, they know exactly her favorite meals. Uh, and one of her uh, or two of her activities, uh, one is in the afternoon dance classes she attends dance classes on a daily basis if she can and then in the evenings she'll get dressed up and go dancing because crystal serenity has dance hosts on board at all times dance hosts and these dance hosts they know the dance numbers that she likes to dance to and they spoil her rotten. She is completely looked after. She is in heaven. Uh, she will uh, uh, sail out her days as long as she can on board this ship. Uh, she feels that dancing has extended her life because it keeps her in shape. Uh, she's in the dance class for an hour a day, and then she's dancing in the evening. And that is keeping her in shape. And she's watching her diet and uh, living a good, clean life. How about that? So 100000 a year. 2000 a week <clears throat> she's living the uh, the life as long as she can and uh, she still has money in the bank and she can, she can keep on going uh, she basically prepays her cruises uh, well in advance I think she prepays about every six months she makes another payment towards the cruise line for the another for another six months and that's how she re maintains such a low price because if you were to book this cruise on a weekly basis, You'd be spending a quarter million uh, to be on there for a year. Where here she's spending a hundred thousand for the whole year, uh, the way she's doing it. Isn't that something? That's a great story. She's written a book, uh, and it's available. Apparently, uh, I think it's available online through Amazon. I don't know the title of the book. Uh, I know that she said something about uh, "I'm homeless, but you should see my yacht." <laughs> Fantastic story. I loved it. I just got a real kick out about that. Um, uh, Silo saying she spoils herself. Just watch uh, Andy Jane. Wow, living her dream. Iskew Park. She, is she looking for a 59 year old boy toy to travel with her? Nope. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> uh, Paul Wilgus, uh, they should pay her because she's such a great ambassador for the cruise line. I think they are in a way. Um, there's about $150,000 of discounts going her direction. And uh, uh, But yeah, nonetheless, uh, now she's selling this book. I think this book will help pay for her cost too. It'll be interesting to see how that goes. Uh, laugh out loud, Iskew from Leslie. Uh, Paul Wilgus, uh, Iskew, I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> Tommy, Eaton, running late, had to go shopping with my wife to pick up things for our cruise on the Carnival Elation in 15 days. There you go. Absolutely. 
Tommy, you know, you can always pick up a T-shirt or two. Just go to my website up here, you know, grab a couple of white collared, you know, traveling with Bruce T-shirts, show off the brand, you know. Just suggest, just saying, you know, just saying. Uh, have a great cruise. That's going to be fun. Leslie Lovelace, the guy from Pakistan who was here last night, stated he'll be cruising on the Crystal Serenity. That's right. He did say that. Uh, that was starting out of, uh, where was he starting? That Was that out of Nice? Uh, or, or was that out of uh, Geneva? No, not Genoa. I think it was out of Nice, I thought. Yeah, yeah that's right. Uh, and he was doing pretty good on the uh, trivia last night too, wasn't he? He was nailing some of those Tom Hanks movies. Uh, one of the questions last night was, uh, name every movie Tom Hanks ever made. 49 films. Uh, that's shocking in itself. But what really shocked, I think, all of us was as the answers were coming out, I would tell the uh, the uh, person you know giving me the answer to a to a title of a film what year it was shot in, and uh, oh my goodness we're getting old. Uh, Tom's getting old too. Uh, wow, he was shooting in the eighties and the nineties, and uh, some of these favorite movies of ours are twenty and thirty years old. <gasps> oh my gosh, that's scary stuff. I tell you, uh, Tommy, thanks for the suggestion, Bruce. Oh, you're more welcome. <laughs> Uh, total greed on my part. I mean, total desperation to raise money on my part. But you know, you can walk around with traveling with Bruce shirt. You know, show off the show off the brand. That'd be great. Uh, I need viewers. Find me viewers. <laughs> Seakeeper Rome. Uh, he said Rome. There you go. He was going to start sailing. Our friend from Pakistan on the Crystal Serenity uh, from Rome, uh, Italy. Right on. Nice place to start a cruise and end a cruise. Just out of there. Now, I had another topic I was going to talk about here. It was just uh, something I came across, and uh, uh, this kind of caught my eye. It's for all you newbies out there, uh, for you out there who are watching the show now or who are watching this show as a rerun. Uh, so if you've not cruised before or you're new to cruising, uh, you're thinking of going on a cruise or you're about to go on your first cruise, <clears throat> this is for you, um, LMBO at ISKU, uh, Charles Jordan. Uh, laughing my butt off. <laughs> 59 years old, looking for a partner? Uh, let me know. Okay, uh, here's a topic. Um, 10 ways to waste money on a cruise ship. Rather than 10 ways to save money, here's 10 ways to waste it. If you want to waste it, here's what you got to do to really blow cash and a lot of cash on a cruise ship. Okay, number one tip. <clears throat> this isn't like... Uh, Best to worst or worst to best is just one of 10. The first one that's mentioned here is uh, ATM fees. Automated uh, banking machines. Uh, there are ATM machines on cruise ships. And depending on the cruise line and where the cruise ship is and the sophistication of the ATM, some of them will dispense uh, U.S. funds, uh, euros, pounds sterling. It all depends on where you are. Uh, avoid them like the plague. Don't use ATMs on board a cruise ship. You're going to get nailed a buck seventy-five or two seventy-five from your bank at home. Oh yeah, count on that. But on the ATM, the ATM machine on that ship, upwards of eight to ten dollars a transaction could be charged to you for an ATM charge. Don't use ATM machines on a cruise ship. You need cash on a cruise ship. Um, you need cash because uh, you're going on shore tomorrow and you want and you're going right onto a tour bus and you're going right to a thing and you want some cash. Here's what you do. Uh, go to the casino. Yeah, go to the casino and uh, sit in front of a slot machine. Uh, let's say you want, uh, I don't know, let's say you want 50 bucks cash. Just I'll pick a number. Um, put your room card in the slot machine and charge uh, $55 to your room. Play a couple of hands of, of the slot machine. And when you got like a $50 balance, it won't take long. You'll be at 50 in no time. Uh, <laughs> uh, cash out. You'll get the little ticket. Walk that over to the uh, cashier over in the casino. Hand them the, 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 the chit there, the ticket. They'll give you 50 bucks cash. And you're just charging it to your credit card uh, through your room charge. And so you're not going to pay the $8 to $10 ATM fee. You're just getting charged on your cruise uh, uh, for a room charge, and you've got 50 bucks cash. There you go. That's, that's the way to go. The other option is if you need cash, 
and you're going to be in St. Thomas tomorrow or St. or St. Lucia or St. Martin or you know Cozumel or you need cash go and use an onshore uh, bank ATM you'll pay uh, uh, a much lower charge you'll still pay but you'll pay a much lower charge but I, I recommend the casino game that's the way to go all right that's number one number two uh, buying a spa product <laughs> You gone to the spa and you got a you got a massage, half an hour massage, one hour massage, massage, and you just feel great. And the gal, the guy, whoever it is, is trying to sell you one of these bottles of the massage oil that they're using on you or the the cream or something. Don't do it. Don't buy it. Don't buy it because it's a fortune. Uh, you'll pay for a bottle thirty five dollars that you can pay five bucks for at a Walmart. Don't do it. Uh, that's how you can you can throw cash away like that. These folks are on commission. They're under pressure. They must try to sell you, to give you the pitch. But you can politely say, no, thanks. It's okay. I, I just want the massage. That's all I want. And get out of there. <laughs> uh, the third one is uh, if back to the casino for a second. Have you seen those, uh, those machines in the casino that uh, they call them cash cubes? You know which ones I'm talking about? Uh, whenever you go to a, uh, a Denny's restaurant in the United States or Canada, in the lobby, they got the little machine with the claw, you know, that picks up stuffed teddy bears and stuff. Well, well they'll have a machine that is operated like a claw. And, and there's this thing. It's a key. It looks like a giant key. And it's inside this glass cube. And, and at the end of the cube is this board. And on the board are little holes that are cut just like the key. And the trick is that you're supposed to take this machine and aim the key right for the for the hole. And if you can get it in there perfectly without touching the sides, you win the corresponding prize. And uh, they have like iPhones and iPads and $100 or $500 or $1,000. And you have to move the thing up and over and in. And you can only move it up and over one way or the other. And then you have to let her go. Um, don't do it. <laughs> I've never seen anyone ever win it. Um, the only way you can win it uh, is this. The machine only allows a winner every so many times. It's, it's, like a, it's like a slot machine. Even though you line the key up perfectly, the machine cannot um, line up perfectly unless the combination inside the computer says it's a winner. You don't know that you're a winner, by the way. Every time you try to use the machine, you've played a round of a slot machine round. You don't know whether you're uh, going to win or not if you are even lucky enough to aim the key perfectly into the slot. So uh, if it's not a winner, your key will not be allowed to be perfectly lined up with the hole itself. You, you can't tell that from where you are because you're outside the, the glass. The key is inside the glass and the board is at the back of the cube. The distance is so far that that one half of a millimeter, you can't tell. Uh, and you can't tell whether you've got a winning combination either. You, all you can do is line it up and let it go and hope that, one, you did line it up just perfectly, and, B, the machine let you do it, and, C, the machine actually let you do it because you had a winning combo number. So don't play that machine. People lose 20 bucks like that. On 20 shots, a dollar each to try to get this prize. Don't do it. Don't do it. Uh, you're better off sitting in front of a slot machine. You're still going to lose, but it'll take you longer. <laughs> okay. Um, the other one is uh, something called sign and sale cards. Well, your room card is a sign and sale card. Your room, your room card lets you into your room. Your room lets you charge anything on board the ship. And if you go to one of these seminars where they have these facial experts, and they give you these little ditties, these little jars and stuff. You may have signed in to get into that room. And if you walk out of that room with some of these little jars, some might be free and some are 70 bucks each. Charged to your account. You had no idea you bought it. You bought it. Don't do it. Be careful about the sign and sale card with these promotional uh, uh, seminar type offers. If you are on a cruise, if you're on a cruise, and you're uh, you're uh, you're going by this uh, the showroom, and you see a sign, uh, you know now now you know speaking at two o'clock until three o'clock, so and so. You can go in there, 
And if it happens to be traveling with Bruce, you know, Bruce from traveling with Bruce is talking from two to three o'clock about being a YouTuber and cruising at the same time. That won't cost you any extra. Uh, there's probably a, you know, pretty nice looking guy in there. Well, good as he could be uh, talking about cruise ships and, and having a good time on YouTube with his followers. Uh, and he might have some free t-shirts with him or something like that. Those you want to take in because those won't cost you. Anything. Okay. So that's the difference between some guy trying to sell you a facial cream and a guy talking about being a YouTuber on YouTube. Just, uh, just a little heads up for you. Okay. All right. Uh, number five. Okay. This is a biggie. This one can cost you so dearly. If you're new to cruising, you've got to know this, whether you're new or not, it doesn't matter. You can get caught. It's called roaming costs for your cell phone. Uh, you walk on that cruise ship, turn off your cell phone. Don't leave it on roll. Don't leave it on anything. Don't even leave it on. Shut it off and put it in your safe and put it away. Uh, the only time you want to use the phone is if you're going on to shore to, uh, oh, uh, say, uh, a Starbucks for free Wi-Fi or to, um, to a Hooters, uh, one of my cruiser's favorite cruise line. Uh, use it there with the free Wi-Fi. Go back on board the ship. Turn it off. And put it back in the in the vault because if you make a phone call or a text or you check out a Netflix movie or a YouTube without having a plan uh, built into the to the ship's Wi-Fi, you're on roaming. Your your phone is on roaming, and your cell phone provider is charging you a fortune without you knowing it, even though you're you don't even realize it uh, because of the roaming fees in the international waters. So be very careful about that. People have had this thousand dollar surprise. On their cell phone bill when they come back from a cruise going i didn't make any go what happened there they left their roaming uh, on and the phone just kept racking it up racking it up be very careful of that number six there's something called pull tabs um generally speaking you might be uh waiting for the show to start in the main showroom and it's like uh starting at eight o'clock you get there at quarter to eight seven thirty you're sitting in the seats waiting for the show to start, and there are staff members walking around with these pull tickets, and they're selling like, you know, three for a dollar or, a, or a, you know, 10 for five bucks or something like that, and you can just charge it to your room. Just show them your card, and they'll just tap the little machine they got, and you get these pull tabs, and you just, it's like little slot machines. Worst odds in the world. You never win. <laughs> it's like uh, if it's a 10% payout, I'd be shocked. It is just an absolute cash grab for the cruise line. At the end of the show, when you're leaving the, the theater, you'll see them all over the floor, thousands of that have been bought by people who are playing them, just pulling them. Don't do it. Don't do it. Uh, pull tabs. Uh, number seven, this is one to consider. It's called the shore excursion cost. Shore excursions. Um, there are certain shore excursions where you may want the cruise line to handle everything, especially if it's complex. But if it's a simple excursion where you're taking a bus going to, say, in San Juan, Puerto Rico, you're going to the fort to see the old fort, uh, you might be better off grabbing a cab or grabbing another couple that are going with you. You find out at dinner time the night before that, you know, someone else is going there. Go together, share a cab, go up to the fort, buy your ticket, go in yourselves. Um, might be half the price, might be a third of the price that the cruise line is paying you. There are shore, uh, shore operators in certain ports. Again, you can check this out online before your cruise even starts, where they will uh, guarantee you, uh, we will get you back to your ship on time. We know the schedule of the ship. Uh, we have buses that are hired by the cruise line, and we have buses on our own. <laughs> and we know exactly when our buses have to be back for the cruise. With the cruise line uh, tour, uh, we can sell you a tour directly independent of the, of the ship. So you may want to consider that, especially if you want to see something a little more than just a one-stop idea. Perhaps if you're in Puerto Vallarta, you grab a van, you got six of you, three couples, you got three couples paying for that van, and you book that guy for four hours. Uh, he'll, he or she will take you wherever you want to go. And if you don't know where you're going, they'll take you around the beaches and the various spots in Puerto Vallarta, some of the best vistas to see the beach and get some great photos they'll take good care of you. So consider that. Uh, uh, tours could be uh, quite a bit more expensive than you're thinking or what you should be paying. Uh, drink cards and drink card deals or drink package deals. This is one that we've talked about a number of times. If you're a, a casual drinker, you don't want a drink card. If you're a moderate drinker, 
you still don't want a drink card. And why, you ask? Because if you're on a seven-day Caribbean cruise and you're going to be off the ship for three of those days, that means for four to six hours, you're not even on the ship during the daytime to drink the drinks that the ship has for you on that drink card. So you're going to lose. You're going to pay more for the card than for the drinks that you're getting. You're also going to force yourself to try to make it work, to make it pay. And that could cost you dearly in, in how you feel. You might get ill. You might be just so groggy. You're not having a good time. Uh, you thought you were, but now you're not because you're racing the time and the drink limit to make your money back. Buy your drinks one by one and uh, you'll drink less <laughs> because you buy them one and one. Uh, but drink on shore. Uh, when you're getting off the ship, go to uh, go to a Hooters or go to a Senior Frogs and enjoy yourself. Get the $2 beer instead of the $8 beer on the ship. That's three days covered. If you got a four stopper, four stops on a, on a cruise, that's four days where you can buy alcohol on shore instead of at ship prices and only three days where you're stuck on ship the whole day. You do the math and you're going to go, I'm not, I'm not even paying anywhere near like 80 bucks a day for drinks on all single, eight times $80, 640 bucks in alcohol. Uh, you might drink $200 in alcohol on the ship, but not 600 and you spent 200 on shore and you had a great time. So think about that. The other one I mentioned is, is these, um, they have coffee carts, like coffee drink carts, where you can buy specialty coffees on a, on a, like a 10 at a time type deal. Check it out. If there are two of you and you can share the card, good plan because it's five each. And if you're each getting a latte in the morning or a cappuccino or you like to have a, an Americano or, or you know something really nice after dinner perhaps, every day you know you're going to do it. You've got seven days to use those 10 or 15 or 20 specialty drinks. And because you did buy... 20 specialty drinks, you saved a dollar a drink, well, you save 20 bucks, then it's worth it. But if you're not sure, um, you're going to be on a, you're going to be on an, on an excursion. You have to be off the ship at eight in the morning for your one day excursion. You won't be back until five in the afternoon. Uh, you're not drinking specialty coffees on board. That's a day lost. Do you really need that card? Uh, you might not, you know, at the end of the cruise, you got five of those drinks left. You're a loser. You should have just bought them individually. So keep that in mind. Um, it's another one of those things you have to do the math on. Okay, uh, number nine. Uh, Want to waste some money? Don't buy an onboard cruise certificate. If you're on the cruise, you'll find that there's a room on the cruise ship where they are selling cruises for future dates. This is the ship you're on and the entire fleet. Uh, go in there. You may find that even in the literature that you get every night in your room uh, when you're at home, uh, when you're back to your room, you'll get you'll get a flyer every day telling you what's going on on board. There might be on the side a little reminder: stop by the sales center for a future cruise and get a special. The special may well be: um, give us a hundred buck deposit today, and you'll get a two hundred dollar credit against a future cruise. Or you'll get a two hundred dollar cabin credit against a future cruise. So for a hundred, you get two hundred. It's called making a hundred dollars. Uh, if you know you're going to be on a cruise, uh, say six months from now, a year from now, or you're even booking a future cruise right on the spot, they may have a deal for you that makes you uh, gives you fifty or hundred extra dollars of, of credits right away. Take advantage of that if they're offering it on the ship. It's worth a look. Uh, last one on this short list. Um, uh, how to waste money on a cruise ship. Uh, watch movies on demand in your room. <laughs> uh, yeah, order the latest hit movie from, uh, you know, The Rock or whatever, and uh, you'll be paying 10 bucks for that show that, uh, you know, you can buy a red box. You can rent that DVD for two bucks when you get home. Don't use a cruise ship to be a movie center in your room. That's not the point of going on a cruise. Your room if it's an inside room, it's for sleeping only. All your activities are outside the room. Your living room is on the ship. Uh, if you're in a balcony, uh, the balcony is there during the daytime to read a book on and the, the, uh, the lookout in the balcony and relax. 
And in the evening, it's also really acts as your bedroom with a bit of television up there. Watch the free television they give you. Watch the free movie they give you. But don't be spending 10 bucks a movie every night on a cruise. You're just wasting your money. So there's 10 suggestions. Uh, there are many more, uh, but I thought I'd mention those today um, and see what you folks uh, thought of that. Uh, let's see, Nina Frank and all. Uh, I've, I slipped on the – oh, Nina Frank is here. Hi, Bruce and all. Poop. I slept on the sofa again. Cold in Sweden again. That, that warm weather came and left quickly. She's got to get it back. Charles Jordan, unless you have a service like Cricket, also you can use your cell phone in St. Thomas and San Juan with no extra charge for roaming. You see, there's certain spots it works because it's U.S. territory. Keep your eye open. Talk to your service provider about those cell phones. Peter Heckema, if you want to gamble on a cruise ship, play blackjack. Best odds to come away a winner. I have played for hours on a $100 bill. Last cruise, I walked away with 750 bucks. Discipline is being shown there. Very well done, Peter. Charles Jordan with cricket, that is. I uh, never did switch my phone to airplane mode. Uh, the, yep, if it works, it works. Paul Wilgus, I saw a vlog where on the drink card, they considered anything above a small as two coffees. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you, you, want, a, you want a large latte? Well, that's two. Oh, that's two. Is it, don't buy the drink, those packages. Just pay a la carte and you'll be okay. A Auntie Jane, so guys, how does it work? Do you have to say, do you have to say what your credit limit is on your credit card? Or do they see that availability of funds when they swipe your card? Or can you use your debit card? Um, Auntie Jane, uh, when you check in at the uh, terminal uh, for your cruise, uh, they'll swipe your card and they'll probably try to authorize a $500 charge or $700 charge, something like that. And they'll get an approval code, hand you back your card, and you're on your way. Um, your, your room card now is tied to your credit card. Uh, the, the, ho the, 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 the hotel, the, the cruise line, the cruise line, will charge your credit card at the end of the cruise for whatever balance is owing. Now, Let's say you get on board with a Visa card or a MasterCard or whatever it is, and you you swipe it. It's all good. You go on board. You're you're there. Uh, you can see the balance that you owe uh, on your room charge every day, anytime you want, on your television in your room. So you can always monitor your balance. Now, if you have say, oh, let's say you have a an eight hundred dollar balance or a five hundred dollar owing at the end of it, tips and specialty restaurants some casinos and some tours, you can decide how to pay that at the front desk inside the lobby of the cruise ship, just like a hotel, uh, before the cruise is over. So if, the, say, the day before, you've decided, well, I, I'm going to pay this $500 that I owe on my debit card, or I want to charge $500 to my debit card because I have the money in the bank, and whatever's left over can be charged to my credit card. Uh, then you can do that. You can just go to the front desk and say, uh, uh, I'm in room so-and-so, hand them your room card. I'm in this room. I want to charge $500 of my room charge to my debit card. Here it is. They'll happily do that for you on the spot. You can avoid credit card fees uh, uh, right away by doing that. If you have cash with you, uh, let's say you, you got lucky in the casino and uh, you picked up $300 on a win and you have this extra cash, you can just walk to the front desk with the cash if you wish and just apply that to your room card, a room charge, I should say. And that'll drop your charge by 300 bucks and, and dictate from there where you want that charge to, okay? They do not run a, a credit limit. You don't have to tell them your credit limit. None of that. No disclosure whatsoever. They will just do a, uh, just do a charge. I'll do like an authorization to the card. Uh, sometimes it's a couple hundred bucks. Sometimes it's 400, 500. It, it, it varies depending on how long your cruise is. Um, and uh, you're good to go. Yeah. So if you have a card with a thousand dollar limit, you should be fine. You should be just fine. Um, uh, let's see here, uh, Andy Jane. Okay, Peter Heckema. We have bought, we have bought a future cruise on a cruise uh, we were on and got two hundred dollar credit, which had to be used within one year. Still a good deal. Yeah, that is a good deal. Iskew Park. Most ships have no debit card services. It's cash, credit card, or nothing. It depends on the line. Uh, it depends on the line. Charles Jordan, uh, so don't book a cruise while on a cruise or book a future cruise while on board. Well, um, 
if you're if you're going on a cruise, let's say you want to go on a cruise in three months and you're at home, uh, you'll find a deal on the internet or through your travel agent. You book your cruise. You go. You're on board the ship, and um, you're thinking, oh, I might I might be interested in the cruise um, six months from now. Uh, go into the go into the room and and talk to the folks there. They may well have a special on a cruise ship, maybe a brand new cruise ship that they're launching or uh, a new itinerary for a cruise. And they might be able to say to you, we've been told by the head office that on board the ship here, we're able to offer you this 10 day cruise to what blah, 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 blah for this much money. And here's how we can do that. We can, we can book you now a, a room. We can guarantee you a room, maybe a higher upgraded balcony room inside room, whatever it is, at a set special price. And for you to hold it, you only need a $100 deposit. And if you make the $100 deposit today, you'll get a $200 room credit on the cruise. If you decide not to take the cruise, you can always get your $100 credit back, your deposit back, uh, good for, say, six months or whatever the amount of time is. So they might have, they might have a deal that is so juicy that you might decide, yeah, here's a hundred bucks. Yeah, okay, here you go. Yeah, you can have my, you can hold my hundred dollar deposit. I've got a cruise, or I don't have a cruise, but I've got a room credit, and I can use it within a year. Yeah, I'll probably use it within a year. You'll go home, and at home you'll decide, yep, yeah, I want to go on a cruise to the Caribbean or a cruise to Northern Europe or whatever it is, uh, and you'll uh, book it through the cruise line, and you'll apply your credit as a deposit. And then you'll get that $200 room credit because you've got the code. They gave you a code with that uh, credit on there. And now you'll apply that to a cruise. Having checked vacations to go in the meantime to make sure that the price you can get it at outside of the cruise line is one price. The cruise line price is another. And you got to see which one is a better deal or they might be identical. But one of those two comes with a room credit that you've already nailed down by being on this cruise. Okay. So there's a, there's a thought there. Uh, Charles Jordan, laugh out loud. If they try to hit my card for 500, 750, it's going to come back with a face laughing at them. <laughs> Paul Wilgus, laughing out loud, Charles. Auntie Jane, okay, thanks, guys. And Bruce, good to know. You betcha. Uh, Debbie Emmanuel, Charles, I say do book it. You usually do not have to pick the exact cruise or ship at that moment. Cruise lines vary. But one I am doing gives you three years to use it. Worth it for me. There you go. There you go. They just the cruise line knows that if you're putting a hundred dollars on the table, chances are higher you're going to book a cruise with them in that time frame. It's just simple odds. It's like Vegas, Las Vegas odds. The house will win if they offer you the perk and they want your repeat business. There you go. Valen Martinez is here from Argentina. How you doing there, buddy? Welcome back. Auntie Jane, hi, Valen, Charles, Jordan, Debbie, Emmanuel, thumbs up. Leslie, lovely, is restricted. Okay, Peter, the cruise line will take an authorization on your card when you first book in and take multiple authorizations throughout the cruise depending how much you're spending. That's right. If you're, if you're racking it up, <laughs> if you got a $1,000 li limit on your card, and after three days of a seven-day cruise, you're at $850, and now you want to book a $300 excursion for you and your wife, and then you want to book the special restaurant for another couple hundred bucks, and you're trying to buy a $400 bottle of champagne that next night, they're doing multiple authorizations on your card. Now, the credit card company may authorize it. They may allow it. They say, oh, yeah, let him in. That's good. Yeah, he's good for it. He's good for it. You come out the end of the day and you got an eighteen hundred dollar bill, and they just say sign here. It's you're all good. As a matter of fact, they send you a statement under your door the night before you get off the ship, telling you you you're paid up. You owe us nothing. All the charges have been put on your card. It's all good. You just ran up your credit card to eighteen hundred dollars, and you might be subject to overcharging fees. By your credit card company. Keep in mind that the cruise line, it's not their fault. The credit card authorized the charges. You didn't want your spending. You'll now pay fees to the banker or the credit card company for the extra charges. But it might only be one charge as long as you pay it off right away. 
Can you do it? Can you do it? Take back the empties when you get home and pay off that credit card. Just a thought. So you have to keep that in mind, okay? Um, Leslie Lovelace, bring a travel agent on your next cruise to get the best deal like I am. <laughs> there you go. Bring a travel agent and they'll take good care of you. Like I said, you know, if you're uh, if you're watching the cruise prices on vacationsgo.com or you've got a travel agent and the cruise line is offering you a killer deal or a no, it's a no obligation deal. They're just saying, give us a $100 deposit on your account and you get an extra $50 room credit on your next cruise. And this is fully refundable anytime. If you don't use it, what have you got to lose? You're just parking 100 bucks somewhere for whatever, three months, six months, maybe a year before you use it up anyway. Um, the extra 100 buck uh, gift, you take it, right? Nothing wrong with that. So you can always uh, always take advantage of something like that. There's nothing wrong with any of those deals. There you go. Well, that's it. Uh, I, I got nothing else to add to my topics today. How am I doing for thumbs up? 23 thumbs ups. Thank you, everybody. We're doing okay. 38 watching right now. If anyone can spare a thumbs up, please, please add them on. That would be great. Thanks for checking out my store. Uh, for all of you folks going to uh, my uh, Redbubble shop, uh, I hope you uh, take a good look at the new items that we've added this week. And uh, if you find something you like, grab it. Uh, if you know someone who would enjoy something like that for Mother's Day or Father's Day, might be a gift idea. It might work out. Uh, I'll be on tomorrow, 2 o'clock. Uh, if it's a slow day on the cruise front, I will have trivia. I suspect I will. I always have trivia Saturday anyway. And uh, we'll see what kind of topics we can come up with uh, for you guys tomorrow. Um, I want to thank all of you for watching, all of you for sending in comments. Uh, thank you for your comments uh, in, in the after hours as well. And all the sharing and the retweets. If you're new to the channel, there's a subscription button here. There's a subscription button there. And uh, I'm trying to remember which one. I think it's this one here has a little bell icon beside it. If you click on that, you'll get notifications every time I do a video or a uh, live stream. No charge to you. Please become a subscriber and join the party. Uh, I want to say thanks to everybody. If you don't see me tomorrow, have a great weekend until I see you Monday, uh, Monday at 5 p.m. And uh, we'll see what happens tomorrow. Debbie Manuel saying, great show. Take care, everyone. Hope to see you guys tomorrow. Bye, Bruce. Paul Wilgus, thanks, Bruce. Have a good night. Uh, thank you, everybody. This is Bruce with Traveling with Bruce saying thanks for joining me today, April the 27th, 2018 on a Friday. Have a great weekend. I hope the weather is improving for everybody. It's becoming more like summer rather than winter. And I'll see you tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern time for travel, trivia, and other stuff. And uh, we'll see how much fun we have, okay? Uh, Nina is saying it was fun as, as long as it lasted. <laughs> Uh, Nina's had a long day. Uh, thanks, Bruce, and good night, gang. Uh, Andy Jane, thank you, and thank you for joining. I'll see you guys tomorrow at 2 o'clock. You guys take care. Have a good one. Bye-bye for now.